I'm Michael Short. Come on, let's go outdoors. Well, this episode, we head off into the backcountry, the Tonquin Valley and its winter wonderland. Now, I've been up to the Tonquin Valley in the summertime, never been up there in the wintertime. And I still haven't. <laughs> no, I uh, passed my camera on to my videographer, Bobby Jones. Bobby's been with us for a number of years here at Let's Go Outdoors. And he is a passionate cross-country skier. He and a number of buddies are going to head up into the Tonquin. When I found out, I asked him, hey, do you mind taking a camera and filming your adventure? And I'm so glad that he did because it's an amazing story. The journey doesn't start off that exciting. A 12 kilometer trudge up an unplowed road. I'm amazed to see a pair of families making the hump in. How did these dads ever manage to keep a pair of five year old boys and seven year old girls motivated to keep going? Chocolate, stories. We're, we're starting to scrape the bottom of the barrel. We're <laughs> yeah, getting into- It's uh, getting pretty ugly near yeah, the top there, but yeah, we, uh, yeah, yeah. But a lot of potty humor. Yeah. Just the last kilometer. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, they arrive at the Edith Cabell Hostel. How far did you guys go? Almost 13 kilometers. Are you tired? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> what do seven-year-olds talk about for eight hours? <laughs> we talked about gymnastics. <laughs> yeah, and him turtles, and dressmaking parties for a maple leaf girls. And we always talked about of course, hipsters! <laughs> well, I gotta confess, you won't see our group jumping around in the snow after a long day of skiing. Meet our gang, six men, all in their 50s. Day two of our trek calls for a 27 kilometer ski into a private lodge where our meals will be provided. Other than one long hill, the terrain is relatively easy and the views just keep getting better and better. After about seven hours of skiing, this will be the prize. The magnificent Tonquin Valley and the majestic ramparts, part of the Rocky Mountain Great Divide. It's just pristine, it's clear, you can see animal tracks, it's just, you can't get this in a city, you have to come out in the back country to get it. Like you, could, you could look back there at those mountains and you could just imagine that no one's ever been here. I don't think there's any range of mountains more spectacular in the world. At the lodge, Gloria is busy baking cinnamon buns for our arrival. 20 years of cooking in here and I still have to read a recipe. 20 years ago, Gloria's son bought this place and she came for one winter to help him out. She's still here. Guests at the Tonquin Valley Lodge are treated to the finest of meals. I can't show you our arrival at the lodge. It was dark by the time we arrived, but Gloria was there to greet us with a big smile and a large plate of steaming cinnamon buns. And we all made it, some looking more exhausted than others, so. Survival is the name of the game. Come here for survival and the scenery. I made the mistake of actually renting new gear, something I wanted to try, but perhaps uh, shouldn't be trying on such an arduous trip. But uh, the beauty about that is, uh, though I was absolutely wasted, I mean, uh, nobody left me behind. <laughs> so day three, we wake up to a gorgeous <laughs> sunny day. There are wood stoves in all the cabins, a welcome comfort. In winter, there are two other places to stay in the Tonquin Valley. Tonquin Adventures is another private lodge, and the Waits Gibson Hut is run by the Alpine Club of Canada. This is our easy day. Some are still a little sore from yesterday, so we just go for a leisurely ski. You got bull-legged bulls, buddy. <laughs> tuck them in, tuck hey, Bobby, them in. Stick to this side of the camera. <laughs> Half an hour ago, I skied up a little hill over here somewhere. It was dead quiet. I skied ahead of my friends, and there was nothing. It was, it was, there wasn't even a wind. It was a total absence of sound. And that was pretty cool, because I would say in today's world, we don't get that very often. Day four, another beautiful morning. It's crisp. Temperatures are in the low minus 20s. We're all heading towards McCarab Pass, a shorter way out than how we came in, about 23 kilometers. It won't take long to warm up. It's a long, steady uphill climb to the top of the pass. 
you can find yourself in places like this. They're, they're magnificent and the rewards are there whether you're 40 or 60. It gives you a lot of energy, I think, places like this. It's totally doable. It's hard, it's challenging, yes, but it's not impossible. And I definitely encourage other people my age to come do it. For one of the most beautiful valleys around. And it's one of the unique uh, areas that allow you a loop where you can have accommodation along the way. It's a good place. It's certainly not for beginners, but for intermediate and expert skiers, the Tonquin Valley is an adventure that's not to be missed. Hope to see you out on the trail. Wow, that was just absolutely amazing. Bobby, thanks so much for doing this. I don't know about you, but if you've uh, never been into the Tonquin before, uh, you have to put it on your bucket list. You certainly won't be disappointed whether you go up there during the summertime or the wintertime. You know, speaking of uh, backcountry adventures, um, don't forget this week at the Edmonton Expo Center, the Edmonton Boat and Sportsman Show gets underway, and you can... Uh, Look at all the outdoor adventure companies, whether it's fishing, hunting, or just a backcountry excursion. Uh, they're all going to be there and an opportunity for you to book your next adventure. That, again, underway uh, this weekend, starts Thursday uh, at the Expo Center and runs right through until Sunday afternoon. And until next week, everyone, I'm Michael Short. Let's go outdoors. Mm -hmm.